Hey, Flippin' Landlord Ninja here. Kevin the Property Prince, and this is another episode of Two Guys, Guys take, take on Real, Real Estate. So today we want to talk about washer and dryers, and do you put them in your apartment or not put in your apartment, or do you put them in your basement? Uh, what do you guys do out there, and what we do? Yeah, all those things. Uh, you know, some people actually provide hookups, some people provide hookups in basements, sometimes they're in apartments. Some people we found actually supply washers and dryers, usually in the basement themselves. Um, oh, coin ops or something like that. Yeah, yeah they do coin ops. Coin ops is a great idea. A lot of people yep. do that. Yeah, absolutely. I so. mean, I, I think some of the reasons why people might do it, uh, well, the coin ops obviously maybe some extra revenue source. Yeah, people believe absolutely that coin ops will provide you more money. And don't forget, we're talking about different types of property here. Yep. So we're looking at maybe single families, multi families, apartment buildings, um, right. different options. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, some of the other reasons why is it actually uh, creates a broader audience. You'll have more uh, people looking at your apartments because you're having more amenities. Right. I mean, think about it. If you're looking for a new apartment and you know you have two decently equal places, one of them says no washer dryers, no no laundry allowed. They tell you walk down the street, go find the, the, right. the local laundromat. Yeah, you'll probably go to the other apartment and take that one instead. So I mean, you know, all things being equal, you'll find a wider audience. You'll command your higher, hopefully, rental price if you allow washers and dryers or provide them on site. Uh, it might also allow for better retention. Uh, tenants less likely wanting to look for another apartment. They might, if you don't have it, they'd be like, hmm, you know, find something that does have it so that they don't have to walk down the street. And then their first, once their lease is up, they look to let go. Yeah, that's 100% right. Um, you know, they'll hear about it from their friends and family. They'll experience having to deal with the laundromat or going to their cousin's house to do laundry. And as soon as they're out of their contract, or Clinton Close, you know, they're looking for a new apartment, somebody that uh, is going to rent to them, you know, with a washer and dryer intact. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll lose tenants potentially over it. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a lot of the reasons right there, the two main ones, attracting tenants, uh, especially a, a high quality tenant, higher yep. quality people are going to want more amenities. Uh, so, attracting tenants, um, having a, a solid uh, rental price, commanding a higher value. Correct. And then retaining the tenants that you do have. Um, I mean, those are three really hard to argue with reasons. <laughs> about why you should have washers and dryers in your apartments or at least allow hookups in the apartment or in the basement of the property. So, wow, it's gonna be a short video if we're just talking about <laughs> how it's a no-brainer to do that. So there's gotta be more to this, right? Well, we actually choose not to provide access. Oh, hell no, we're not doing washers and dryers nope, in any nope, rooms. Nope. No, 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 bad idea, bad idea, terrible, terrible. And why does that count? Well, <laughs> how much time do you have, Matt? <laughs> Well, uh, ideally we keep these under 10 minutes. All right. right. Well, <laughs> you're going to have to be cutting me off here left and right because I can go down a list of so many different reasons and ways in which it's a bad idea to have washers and dryers or even allow them at your property. Well, where, where do you want to start? Uh, let's talk about damage, tenant damages. Uh, Easy. Easy. Basically, unattended washing machines or the hose hookups, you know, fail or something like that, or they have a cheap washer that fails. Yeah. And now you have damage either into your basement, your floor. Oh, wait, guess what? Or you leaked into the first floor tenants yeah. and they didn't happen yeah. to have renter's Huge. insurance. Huge. So now guess what? They're, they're coming after you, asking you Absolutely. to repair, Absolutely. asking you to yep. you know, reimburse them for everything they got lost Sing or damaged. It. Sing it, they don't, they don't chase the upstairs neighbor who was neglectful about their use of the stuff. They, nope. uh, they go for the landlord. They expect the landlord to reimburse them, pay them for everything. Absolutely crazy. That's exactly why renter's insurance, at least in most states, it's exactly one of the main reasons why people have it. You know, it covers damage inside their home, things like that. But wow. Uh, so you're exactly right. I mean, again, all homes are going to be configured a little bit differently. But Correct. if you're in a multifamily and you've got washer and dryer hookups in the apartments and you think that's an amazing, smart business plan, you're not necessarily wrong until one day, you know, you have an issue. And if you're working with a little bit... Um, you know, more challenging uh, of a class of tenants, you're going to find that they have uh, less reliable machines that they don't put money into, they don't maintain. You know, if, uh, if you're renting yeah. to high, high end rentals, a lot of times you're dealing with people with brand new equipment that's probably not broken down. Right. Um, but even in the higher end rentals, people don't always know to clean the uh, lint filter. And uh, guess what? Also, now you have a fire. Yeah. Wow. Well, we were talking about leaks. We didn't even move on to the fire. You're oh, still my thunder. <laughs> well, no, but you're absolutely right. So, I mean, maintaining the equipment, no matter if it's brand new and expensive, if they're a super rich, you know, well-employed uh, tenant or somebody that uh, has never had a job in their life and has something that they basically is one step out of the scrap metal yard for a washer and dryer. <laughs> These things can absolutely happen. They can leak. Yep. Um, we've actually, we've literally had situations where people have had active leaks with their washer and dryers due to them being damaged, broken, worn out, 
uh, not just an honest mis, you know, oversight of something. And uh, they just didn't repair the leak because what do they care? I mean, what yep. do they care? I mean, it just doesn't really, it works. It still washes their clothes. So what if it drips on the floor? They wipe it up a little bit after, maybe. Yeah, and then your floor is coming up, whether it be tile, VCT, whatever it might be, and that's all popping up. Yep. Or... yep. Subfloor after that, yep. rots out, structural problems. Mold uh, potential. Yeah. And uh, that's when it began, then it becomes your problem. Uh, maybe yep. they have a subsidy inspection. If you're, uh, you're renting to somebody that, uh, that's in a program that has routine inspections, yep. uh, floor tiles, uh, any kind of flooring will warp or, or, or come loose if it's exposed to water. And yep. now you'll be filling those. And guess what? It's the landlord's responsibility to make sure everything's intact and functional. Now the subsidy won't pay you uh, for the rental anymore. So now the tenant obviously can't pay the full rent. Correct. Now the subsidy won't pay their portion uh, you're, you're, you're stuck now, uh, really, really stuck. Now, unless you're repairing their damage. Right. And so now you're out that cost. Now, I mean, could you bill them, of course, for it? <laughs> good, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, some people might be able to pay for it, some not, but they're going to argue it, most likely. Sure. Well, what uh, do you mean? Why do I have to pay this? Why? <sighs> yeah. It's not my fault. You got to, I mean, all your yeah. floor was like that when I moved in. You're going to get all these kind of things. And I bet people are out there saying, well, that's what security deposits are for. You know, take it out of that. Oof. I mean, I don't even want to talk about security. That's a whole other video, especially True. depending on what state you're in. Let's not even touch can, on can that. We, can we summarize by saying, though, that there's <laughs> chances are your security deposit is probably going to get eaten up in like 10 different other ways. So okay. I would not rely on seeing an issue like this and thinking you're going to be fine and squared up at the end if it all comes, you know. I would agree. Yeah. Right. Um, so let's move on. We talked about the water damage, the yep. leaking uh, and from poor maintenance of them. Um, what if it's uh, what if it's in the basement? What if you put hookups in the basement? You don't have to worry that much. It's a basement foundation, a cement floor. Worst case scenario, a little bit of water gets down there, not the end. Sure, of the world, right? not a big deal uh, yeah. until you have everyone in the neighborhood coming over and doing their laundry. Well, I mean, now, that can happen in the in the apartment. Oh, too, in the but, apartment as well. Yeah. But uh, yep. So everybody in the neighborhood. What do you mean? Like everybody's just just that's the neighborhood. Friend, family, also. whatever uh, it might be. So all of a sudden your water bill comes back. It's. I was jet. just gonna say, why would you care? But right. Water, water bill. bill. Water bill. <laughs> wow. I mean, water bill. You don't even think about a huge water bill until you've had this happen to you. Oh, yeah. We've had, I mean, a water bill over $1,000 in one month. Yeah. That's insane. And literally, it will be a situation which your tenant um, has their all of their cousins, all of their friends and family and relatives. Come on over. You know, hang out at my house. We'll watch TV. We'll watch yep. Netflix. We'll eat, drink, do whatever. And they're just doing load after load of laundry constantly. It's yep. running 24-7. Well, now, so, so it's in the basement, but let's just say it's a multifamily. Yep. So what about the neighbor? Now, oh, he used mine. Oh, no, he broke this. Oh, my God, who's this, this, there? Ah, Absolutely. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, chances are if you're, well, just say you're renting a three-family house and you're allowing everybody to have washer and dryer hookups, now you're going to get complaints, uh, possibly, from one neighbor saying, hey, uh, you know, the neighbor on the second floor keeps using my machine. They broke it. They damaged it. Uh, think about it this way. Depending on how your home is set up, uh, maybe you have an owner's meter. I mean, who's paying the utility cost to run these things? Aside from the water, assuming the landlord's paying for the water, who's paying the energy cost? Maybe it's a gas dryer, maybe it's an electric dryer, but if this stuff's all wired into your owner's meter, you're getting wrecked on this cost. Well, but let's just say it's not. So say you actually hire an electrician, do it sure. the right way, pull a permit, yep. and actually set you know each one tied to their own meter. So they're all right next to each other, yep. all plugged into the, each outlet is going to yep. the right person's hey, apartment. Look, all done right. Sure, sure. Oh. Super easy. Plugged in. Super easy. Someone else's. And then they switch it right back when they're done. Yep. Uh, oh my God, she's been using my power. Oh my God. Yep. You know, and now you're. What are you guys going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Yep. I want to get paid back. It's your tenant that stole my electricity. Could have been going on for months. You're fighting well, this case. So yeah, we're fighting the case. And they're saying, hey, you need to talk to a judge, go to a judge. <laughs> Great. Guess what? You're still getting named. Oh, yeah. You're still being brought in. And you have to bring your lawyer and you're tied up in court yep. um, because. Folks, a lot of times folks just don't want to work this stuff out. And uh, yeah, it's a, so, it, it, you know, it sounds like a super easy thing. It sounds like super minor that these things don't happen, won't happen, can't happen. They've happened. Yep. All of these things have happened. Um, and, yeah. Uh, what about coin ops? Yeah, I was going to say somebody, I'm sure, was going to say, hey, easy, guys. Charge for the laundry. Make money. It's a revenue driver, right? Mm -hmm. It actually will bring in money to the property. And, you know, you're right. You're not wrong. This point. People make it. People absolutely make money with coin op machines and coin laundry. Absolutely. I'm not trying to knock that. I'm saying you hear about people making it and making more money with coin ops. You don't probably hear as much about the huge train wreck that they can actually be, too. <laughs> so let's share a little bit of our background with that. I mean, let's see. We, we've had uh, 
machines damaged. Uh, no. Why would somebody damage a coin op machine? Well, I don't understand. There's money in it. Oh, let's, there's let's money in it. Take it out. Let's God, get it. Crowbar. Uh, yeah. Screwdriver. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah, again, you, you know your tenants better than we do, um, and certainly the locations of some of your properties. But uh, yeah, absolutely. If people know that there's a huge chunk of change in cash, yep. basically, in a little metal box that's unsupervised, good luck, good luck keeping it there. <laughs> uh, they will be jimmied into. Um, they'll be pried open. If not, to steal the money. Uh, but to actually rig it so you can just push the button there you go inside, that's you another know? way trick the machine absolutely um, so now you've basically been again paying for the utilities paying for the water now yeah. you have damaged machines that you probably paid for have um, to repair yeah and they're being run 100% for free and if they're not you're being robbed by them because they're just taking the money out of it and to be honest with most laundromats right now you have free drying I mean really, oh, really? It's, yeah. sure yeah I, doesn't, I mean, how much real money are you going to make from this? For the amount of time you have to go there and empty them out, check them, fix them. Well, I mean, is there a huge return on that? I don't know. You don't never underestimate people's laziness and how much they're willing to pay for being lazy. I think you can absolutely make money on, on having coin op stuff, but you know, it has to be well secured. Uh, right. It absolutely has to be has some level of supervision and uh, accountability. Some kind of place. camera would be a good idea. Uh, uh, we have done that in the past. Yeah, I mean, don't forget. I mean, maybe maybe some of the people that are watching are in a, a, a owner occupied three family or a six yep. family that they're at every day. Uh, well, that where they have sense. some kind of camera monitoring or any of that kind of stuff. Then is it viable? It's much more viable. Absolutely. I would agree. Yeah, but you know, if you're uh, you know running stuff and it's a kind of a set it and forget it scenario. Um, you'll run into some of the stuff we've run into that we've talked about. Um, there's, you know, more that we haven't talked about. The basement door, if these things are in the basement, the basement door is left open or unlocked. I mean, there's a lot more going on down there than laundry, let me tell you. I don't, what have we, uh, gosh, let's keep this family rated, but uh, what have we seen uh, um, in some of our laundry? laundry someone rooms? seemed to uh, have not been able to make it to the bathroom and had to do their business. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. It's right? true, you had to go. Unfortunately, it was in our washing machine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and man, did they have to go. Yeah. That was bad. I'm not going to pretend I didn't see it and just ignored it. Let <laughs> somebody else find that one. And, uh, didn't, didn't, no, I'm kidding. The main insect, they had to clean that up. Uh, I wasn't, that's get that's that right. guy erased. <laughs> um, so there was that, sure. I mean, there's, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of times it's a little private area and maybe... Uh, Maybe you're down there doing uh, doing some laundry with uh, somebody you're into. I don't know. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you, know you guys get in the mood. I, I'm not really sure, but we've absolutely found evidence of uh, people using uh, our laundry areas for some other recreational activities as well. This is true. Um, you know, in, 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 and by that I mean you know inappropriate um, physical activities. But uh, <laughs> you know, we found you know um, blunt wrappers, um, you know, yep. drug paraphernalia, uh, you know, in all seriousness. Um, anything you don't really want going on where, you know, where maybe your child or somebody could wander into uh, was going on in these places. Uh, the other thing is, and because some people, uh, often we install, uh, install auto door closers yeah, well, and yeah. people will prop them open. Now what we've had also is, you know, a homeless person maybe or someone like that just kind of finding a nice warm spot that they can, you know, yeah. sleep for the night. And now you're walking into, you know, someone just, you know, sleeping there that can be... Yeah, an unsecured... Traumatizing for a tenant or 100%, yourself. 100%, <laughs> absolutely. Nobody, I mean, think about it. An unsecured basement door uh, means you have uh, the potential. I mean, one of your tenants, and you could be renting to a you know, nice old lady, and she goes to do her, her laundry, and she's scared by whatever she walks into down there, whoever she walks into down right. there. But that might not also be a person down there. That might be an animal. And if you're leaving a, a door open, especially as it gets colder outside, you know, some, some little guy's going to want to come in where it's warmer. And uh, yep. now you're dealing with... You know, maybe a raccoon or a skunk, oh. Oh, uh, something yes. like that. Sure, and that's where we send Matt. We send Matt after the skunks, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll adopt the raccoon. I guess they're cute. <laughs> I'll take a raccoon. Who wouldn't? You wouldn't really rescue a raccoon? I'm surprised you haven't actually. You've taken every other animal: cats, yeah, know, squirrels. Know. Yeah, bird. Bird. Yeah. yeah. Bunnies, of course. Bunnies. Bunnies. Lots of bunnies. Everybody knows. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, it, it allows to an unsecured basement. We. I'm very much against not having uh, basement access in general. So if look to at watch, our prior video. Yeah. Actually, that's a great one. You should definitely <laughs> look it up if you think it's wise to have a, a basement to access to your tenants. Uh, let me try to talk you out of that. Um, but yeah. So I mean, if your if your hookups or your machines are actually in a basement that's accessible, think about the other things you have down there. Uh, again, watch the other video for for uh, you know more about that. But think they'll have access to your entire infrastructure, your entire home. Exactly. Um, so, so to kind of wrap it up. Yeah, we should probably wrap it up. Yep, I think so. Uh, so basically, you know, our take is we don't allow uh, 
washers and dryers. Yeah. There are some pros and cons on either side. Everyone, you know, you need to make your own business decision. Uh, we chose not to, as and for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can maybe make some extra revenue on it with a coin app yep. setup uh, if you can do it right and manage it. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot to tell them is, uh, you know, the the uh, stressed out 11 o'clock maintenance call where they're all upset because the coin op broke down and they're trying to wash their work clothes or work uniform yep, for Monday it's morning. all soaking wet. Yep. Stole their dollar, allegedly, and uh, they can't get their laundry done because the machine broke and it's your fault and how are they going to get to work in the morning and you got to fix this. Uh, I mean, it just it goes on and on. I mean, this stuff is it never ends. So, you know, in my opinion, if you're looking for as much of a hands-off, um, you know, rental situation, this is you know a point of failure and a point of issue uh, a lot. And it would uh, by by eliminating the ability to do laundry in the unit or, or on the property, you eliminate a lot of extra extra headache that probably isn't that cost effective. Exactly. I hope so, that helps. Yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if it was, please leave a comment. We'd like to hear your feedback as well. And uh, please yeah. definitely subscribe uh, and hit that like button for us because we're really trying to you know get to 100 subscribers as fast as possible. Yeah, and share us around if you know anybody yep. else that uh, you know may find this kind of stuff interesting. If you're getting into real estate and you don't know what you're getting into and you're trying to find out more about that, um, definitely share this with your friends or anybody else that's interested in learning more about real estate. Uh, we're really hoping to you know open up uh, and share some of our experiences, our failures, yep. and, <laughs> and our successes, successes uh, from the last 12 years or so. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.